everyone and thanks for buying this DVD. As I've always said, the game's about the players and fans. We couldn't have done it without you. Hope you enjoy the DVD and see you at Carroll next season. An unbeaten pre-season campaign, more than 25,000 fans packed into Carrow Road, losing hope, expectation and optimism. What could possibly go wrong as the Canaries kicked off life in League One? Well, pretty much everything as it happened. City fans of a nervous disposition might care to look away now. Here for the record is how Norwich City's first season in the third tier of English football, for the first time in almost 50 years, got underway. Five nil down by half time. Cody McDonald's consolation nearly even that as Colchester United, managed by a certain Paul Lambert, went on to inflict the worst home on Norwich in the club's 108 year history. The club's 108 year history. Truly extraordinary. Three days later, it was off to Yeovil in the Carling Cup, desperate to restore lost pride and reputation. Brian Gunn's much-changed team duly achieved that, courtesy of a Grant Holt hat-trick after Wes Houlihan had given City the lead from the penalty spot ten minutes into the second half, that following a foul on Adam Drury. Holt's first goal followed shortly, the City striker opening his Canary account, converting the cross to make it 2-0. Holt then started and finished the move that led to his second and the Canary's third after Tom Adeyemi saw his shot blocked. Holt seizing on the rebound to make it 3-0. And he capped an impressive personal performance by surging forward before unleashing a cracking shot to complete his hat-trick. Norwich then comfortably threw to round two of the competition, more importantly repairing at least some of the damage from Saturday's opening day debacle. Much to the delight of City's 700 travelling fans making the 500 mile round trip all the way to Hewish Park. But by the weekend, Ian Butterworth was in caretaker charge after Brian Gunn's departure as manager some 24 hours earlier. All sorts of candidates immediately linked with City from Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank to Gordon Strachan. Yet again, the club's away support was the highlight here. More than a thousand at St James's Park, heartened to see Norwich take a second half lead through defender Jens Bertel Askew. Little more than five minutes later, and City's hopes of a first league win of the season were dashed when substitute Richard Logan equalised within two minutes of coming on. Three days later, and along with the 1,800 Norwich fans at Griffin Park, City's new manager, Paul Lambert. Norwich acting quickly to replace Brian Gum. Lambert will have been impressed with the Canaries' travelling support, but not the performance. Ryan Dixon's header putting the bees in front five minutes after half time. David Hunt made it 2 0 with a free kick from the edge of the box midway through the second half, and the damage was done. City grabbed a consolation courtesy of a free kick from Owen Tudor Jones in injury time. But the defeat marked the end of Ian Butterworth's brief spell in charge. And back at Carrow Road, it was time to unveil the new man, Paul Lambert, facing the media. If Norris had come out the blocks flying and beaten us, I wouldn't be standing here today. So, and, um, so my main priority was coach, as I said. Now it, it, it goes to the Norris lads. And we will do everything we can to get their confidence going and get them playing a way that, that I think the game should be played. When you come out here and you know you're in a proper game because of the fan base and the, the demand that it has for success and the, the fans here are just willing for this club to do well and I will do everything I can to give them success. Well, the new manager made no fewer than six changes for his first game in charge, the visit of Wickham, 
And it's fair to say Lambert's arrival had an instant impact as the Canaries raced to a three-goal lead by half-time. Gary Doherty and Wes Houlihan dropped to the bench. Grant Holtz taking over as skipper. And City's new captain started the scoring on 15 minutes on the end of Simon Lappin's free kick, 1-0. Young Corey Smith doubled the lead ten minutes later. Paul McVeigh's corner cleared only as far as Smith and he lashed home his first senior goal for the Canaries. A cracking way to open his City account. The third came from the same source. McVeigh swinging in another corner from the right. Headed back by Holt for John Otsemabor to head home. Only his second goal in City colours. 3-0. A marked contrast to the events of only a fortnight earlier. Norwich were then given a wake-up call when a long kick was flicked on, the awkward bounce causing problems and John Paul Pittman taking advantage to pull a shell shot to Wickham back into the game, 3-1 at half-time. Within 30 seconds of the restart, the visitors were right back in it again, the ball headed into the danger area on the edge of the box. Matt Harold with an unstoppable shot into the top left corner. Suddenly City's comfortable lead had all but evaporated. To their credits, the Canaries reply was swift and effective. Lapin with another pinpoint free kick, finding Jens Bertolascu, whose powerful header made it 4-2. Certainly no shortage of goals at Carra Road at this early stage of the campaign. And the scoring wasn't over. Skipper Holt rounding it off with arguably the pick of the bunch. Cool finish for his second and City's fifth. Remarkable transformation given what had happened on the opening day of the season. An impressive start to the new regime too. Could it be the beginning of a bright new era at Carrow Road? Well, what a change, what a delight. Uh, we played our second string there and absolutely walked them off the pitch. Make no mistake, that was Wickham, very bad team. But hey, the future is looking yellow. I love it. Something we've never seen for years, movement off the ball. Brilliant. Excellent, mate. Brilliant. Yeah, it really was. I hope that's a thing to come. New things to come, you know. Game on. If you can get those players going, as I said, it'll be, it'll be incredible. And, um, and that's what we'll try and do. And in time, we'll try and, we will try and get players in to help the, the lads that are, are already here. And um, we'll see if we can build something really good here. Sadly, Norwich couldn't follow up that win by making progress in the Carling Cup. Premier League Sunderland scoring three times in the first half of their second round tie. A brace from Andy Reid and to Kenwin Jones' opener. Wes Houlihan pulled one back in the second half for City after Cody McDonald's initial header hit the post. But the unfortunate Owen Tudor Jones put into his own net shortly afterwards. City beaten 4 1. There's some positive and some, some negative. So, but I thought we started the game really well and uh, with a couple of chances to get to get ahead and, um, and then materialise and we had a, an error at the back and, and you get punished when you're playing that type of, that type of calibre of a team. And so back to league action with a happy return to Victoria Park for defender Michael Nelson giving Norwich the lead with an acrobatic overhead kick against his former club. This the first ever league match between the two teams, Norwich comfortably on top and underlining their superiority with a second from Stephen Hughes. 2-0 and two straight league wins for new boss Paul Lambert. And after that first meeting at Hartlepool, another first in the shape of City's debut in the Johnson's Paint Trophy, which meant a swift reunion with Brentford. Canary striker Chris Martin repeated his feat of a year earlier when he scored against Brentford on his way to winning the trophy with Luton. Martin clearly keen on a Wembley return, scoring the only goal here with a sweepy play shot into the far corner. Norwich through to round two. Four days later and Norwich were looking to continue their progress up the League One table with a visit of Walsall. No repeat of the bumper goals fest this time though. Norwich thought they'd won it with a Michael Nelson header in the second half, but it was ruled out by referee Russell Booth, although no one seemed to be quite sure why. City had to settle for a point in their first goalless draw of the season. To Milton Keynes, where Norwich were looking for back-to-back -back wins on the road, and they couldn't have wished for a better start against the MK Dons, Chris Martin putting them in front after just 17 seconds. And he wasn't far from grabbing a second on the night from John Otsemabor's deep cross. City held the lead against Paul Lintz's men until 12 minutes into the second half. Lewis Goburn, under pressure from Luke Daly and Simon Lappin, free kick given. Jason Punchin beating Fraser Forster with a curling left footer. 
but there was much debate about the next incident. Goburn again going to ground after Martin's challenge. Referee Roger East responding to his assistant's signal. Penalty given, although the replay suggested Martin got a toe to the ball. But Peter Leven sent Fraser Forster the wrong way. 2-1 to the Dons. Paul Lambert less than impressed with that late decision. Ince clearly pleased to claim the points. Back to Carra Road and another big test for Norwich in the shape of early League One pace at Charlton. The Londoners, like the Canaries of course, relegated from the Championship last season, but starting the campaign a whole lot brighter and starting this game a whole lot brighter too. Dion Burton with the diving header from a corner to put the addicts in front. And City were very much on the back foot when fullback Lloyd Sam pushed forward to great effect. Neat footwork before crossing for John Joe Shelby to head Charlton second just before half time, 2 0. The Canaries with a veritable mountain to climb against a team unchanged in eight league games. But Norwich were back in the match moments before the break thanks to quick thinking from skipper Grant Holt. City on the break, winning a throw in, Holt spotting Wes Houlihan's run, and the midfielder celebrating his return to the lineup with a cracking finish. Houlihan's third goal of the season. Still early days in the campaign, but signs here of things to come after Houlihan's recall to the team by Paul Lambert, powering forward with great determination and showing the sort of form that would quickly restore his status as a City regular and pivotal part of the Canaries' reviving fortunes. 2-1 at half-time. The Canaries pushed forward in search of an equaliser, but despite their pressure, were still trailing as the game moved into injury time. Their persistence eventually paid off two minutes into added time with a bit of overdue luck. Chris Martin's defective cross, Holt putting Alex keeper Rob Elliott under pressure. Difficult to see who got there first, but frankly, it didn't matter as the ball ended up in the back of the net. Holt claimed it, another bumper Carra Road crowd went wild. A good comeback, further underlining City's resilience and ability to live with the best League One had to offer. The replay not exactly conclusive, but all credit to Holt for putting his head in where it mattered and forcing the issue. 2-2. Next up, Priestfield Stadium and Norwich sporting their white chain strip for the first time this season at Gillingham. And backed by another strong away following of more than 1,400 fans. City started well enough, Luke Daly with a strong run and powerful strike which flashed just past the post. But their host got the break 10 minutes before half-time. Simeon Jackson's clever flick releasing Curtis Weston. His run halted by Fraser Forster. A genuine attempt to play the ball with his hands, it seems. But referee Paul Taylor had other ideas, giving a penalty and producing a red card. Forster sent off on only his fifth appearance on loan from Newcastle, which meant the introduction of 18-year-old Declan Rudd. His first task was to keep out Jackson's spot kick, but he was sent the wrong way. Gillingham, one up. The Canaries were a whisker away from a swift reply. Michael Spillane's header just inches over. Second half and Rudd produced a wonderful stop to deny Weston and keep City in the game. And City stepped up the pressure deep in stoppage time. Grant Holt's deflected cross running nicely for Wes Houlihan. But his shot was blocked. The ball squirming away for a corner. And Rudd joined in the melee as the corner was swung in from the right. Holt's header looped onto the bar. And up popped Daryl Russell to grab a dramatic last gasp equaliser. His first of the season. City's travelling faithful rewarded 1-1. The midweek visit of Leighton Orient fell very much into the game of two halves category. The Londoners putting up stubborn resistance for the first 45 minutes. The game then bursting into life in controversial circumstances as Norris defender Adam Drury went into a shuddering challenge with the O's JJ Milligan early in the second half. 
fully committed by both players. Too much so on Milligan's part. Referee Carl Evans spotting that he left his foot in. Drury riding on the ground. Mr Evans producing the red card and Orient were down to 10 despite their protests. Referee Evans adamant, Milligan's trailing foot doing the damage. It took a while for Norwich to make their advantage pay. It was still goalless until 15 minutes from the end when the breakthrough finally came after a neat, patient build-up and splendid finish from striker Chris Martin. Martin delighted and very much showing signs of the potential that saw him make such an impressive impact as a youngster a couple of seasons back. The goal prompted a brilliant late show by the Canaries. Three minutes on, more impressive build-up play, inspired by the lively Wes Houlihan, picking out the overlapping Drury. His cross met by Grant Holt, a sublime chest and volley. Sweet, sweet goal for the city skipper. Number seven of the season for him. Norris now fully in control. Tunil became three shortly after that with something very special. The Canaries now beginning to display the kind of form that would act as a launch pad for their promotion challenge. Sit back now and enjoy the build-up to and clinical finish from Michael Spillane. Norwich City's goal of the season, no less. Exquisite goal worthy of any stage, and Spillane, like Chris Martin, beginning to fulfil his burgeoning potential. And the Canaries wrapped up their late to late super show with a fourth in added time from Jamie Curitan. Bursting clear, finishing in style, shades of the old confident Curitan, and late goals another hallmark of Norwich's enduring spirit. A good night's work by City, sending out a big message to the rest of League One. Paul Lambert's team means business. 4-0 on the night. Four days on and Bristol Rovers were next to feel the full force of Norwich's growing confidence. Chris Martin showing his prowess for the dead ball, which we kick giving City a ninth minute lead. That's three goals in four games for Martin. His and the fans reaction becoming a familiar sight at Carra Road in this campaign. But City didn't have it all their own way, as Rovers were awarded a penalty. Striker Joe Kafour going down in the box. Referee Andy Hall ruling that had been impeded by Jens Bertelaski. A yellow card for the Dane, despite his and Declan Rudd's protestations. But was given no chance as Jeff Hughes confidently rammed home the Rovers' equaliser. The booze underlining how Norwich fans felt about the penalty decision. A setback for Paul Lambert, but it wasn't long before City were awarded a penalty of their own. Wes Houlihan barged off the ball. Referee Hall pointing straight to the spot. And it was Houlihan who did the honours. City back in front. And they were far from finished. And you, Rovers defending left a lot to be desired at times. Simon Lappin finding an unmarked Grant Holt, who finished clinically. And 3-1 soon became 4-1 as Holt showed another side to his attacking talents. Played in by Darrell Russell, the rest was all his own work. Rovers powerless to stop him. Keeper Mikkel Anderson giving no chance as well. 
You get the feeling City skipper enjoyed that one. Absolutely no doubt about what the fans felt. So City rampant in the first half. They added one more in the second half stoppage time. Jamie Curiton joining Holt and Martin by scoring in successive home games to complete their biggest win of the campaign so far. 5-1 it finished, nine goals in back-to-back -back home games. The Norwich City promotion push is certainly starting to gain momentum. We got a terrific goal at the beginning of the match and then the penalty against us, so but to score five and the way we're playing at the minute, we're, we're certainly playing, playing uh, at the top of our game. A return to the Johnston's Paint Trophy and a return to Gillingham for Norwich next, just a fortnight after the 1-1 draw at Priestfield in the league. Paul Lambert's making no fewer than eight changes, Tom Adiemi starting in midfield and going as close as anyone to breaking the deadlock in the first half. A strong, penetrating run, his shot flashing just wide of the far post. It was goalless at half-time. The all-important winner came midway through the second half, courtesy of what you might call an inspired substitution. Cody McDonald coming on for Chris Martin and coming up with the goods less than five minutes later. A great goal, a worthy match winner and Norwich through to round three. And so up to Brunton Park next and the quest for more league points. Norwich City's League One journey brings them to another ground they haven't visited for quite some time. 293 miles from home, it was 24 years ago on Monday, the last time Carlisle hosted the Canaries for a league game. Now Houlihan, loads of room on the left-hand side, Holt can't work it that way though. Lapin, Martin to the right. Frankham's getting up past him, Martin will shoot. Got underneath it. Just caused a little bit of excitement amongst the Norwich City supporters. Chris Martin has scored three goals in his last four league games. Four goals for the season, all told. And no little confidence. This is Kevin Hurst. Kavanagh. Looking all the way over to Robson and Frankham. Heads it behind. Applauded by his goalkeeper for that. Probably the safest course of action. Promising this for Greg Abbott's side. I think looking across the whole teams, Norwich do have the extra height. Has to be right for Carlisle, it is a good one. Great chance, Forster's got in the way. Ian Hart arriving in the penalty area. Not the sort of goal you'd expect him to score, really. And he got in front of his marker. It is actually a very good block. Hart was directing that goal bound. Ty were warned by a few thousand that there was a Norwich player arriving quickly. Too quickly. Down the line from Drury to Martin. Houlihan is eating up the yards to get into the box. Kavanagh went with him. Houlihan! It has been coming. And Norwich have the lead in the 41st minute. And you have to say, it always looked likely that a Carlisle mistake would lead to a goal for the visitors. Kavanagh did well in the first place. He kept up with Houlihan, and then he made an awful attempt at getting the ball away. Ball caught between his legs. Played it from right leg onto left, and it broke so kindly for Houlihan, who was never going to miss. It's a messy goal, the cross was scuffed initially. Houlihan claims his fifth of the season, that's four goals in his last six games. And a lot of it was down to Graham Kavanagh, unfortunately. Livesey. Kavanagh. Didn't need to take a touch there, it's Holt, and now Houlihan. Holt wants it, Houlihan's gone himself, and it's blocked by Pidgeley. Carlisle supporters are starting to air their frustrations at the number of mistakes their side is making. Again, it's Graham Kavanagh. And Grant Holt was perfectly placed, but Wes Houlihan 
Only had eyes for a second goal for himself there. Lappin's corner. Up went Holt. Pidgeley blocks. Goal kick this time. How on earth did Grant Holt manage to be free? It's Hulahan who was trying to nip in front of the keeper and divert the ball past him. Russell. Martin. Hulahan almost attacked by Taiwo. First came in, but didn't win it cleanly. That's Martin! So close to a second Norwich goal. There was a little nick from a Carlisle player too because it's a corner. Struck with positive intent by Chris Martin. Must have just deflected off Ian Hart. Another goal wins it for Paul Lambert's team. Twenty minutes to go. Tough one to call at the moment. Lappin's corner. Headed away by Keo. And that's over the top from Holt. Danny Lives is up there too. Over it comes. Straight onto the head of Bertalascu. Bridge Wilkinson. That was Hart trying to turn. This is Keo still up there. Down on the edge of the box. Carlisle appeal. Norwich get on with streaking downfield. Grant Holt is on the ball. Loads of room on the right. Holt's heading that way himself. It's through for Smith, who's onside. And Pidgeley has denied Norwich what would have been a match-winning second goal. Too high for Anjinsa. He's done really well to bring it down, though. That's excellent. Bridge Wilkinson. Over Doby. Drury pops it up. It's broken for Taiwo. Carlisle do have numbers forward. This is Bridge Wilkinson to hit it. Saved by Forster. The flag has gone up anyway. There was an offside in all that. Greg Abbott can't understand that decision. Brilliant strike from Bridge Wilkinson, but as it's parried away, there's Keo offside. Well, another three points. The upward run continues, but you had to work hard for that one. Yeah, really tough. I said before the game, this should be a really tough, tough game for us. Totally different from playing at playing at Norwich, and um, but to grind out a result, one knows a terrific result. Scruffy goal, but finished well. Yeah, from a really talented footballer, really talented footballer. So. Um, I'm delighted to get to get the three points. It's had a long journey to go to go back home, and you seen the following again. It was it was terrific, and uh, we're we're doing we're doing great at the minute. We've got a bit of momentum going, and we can go to Ellen Road, which is a really tough game against a really good side. Indeed, Ellen Road was the next stop for the Canaries, a big one for both clubs. Well, it's become a stable partnership here, Beckford and Becchio, who hasn't really missed too many league games in his time here. In fact, I think it was the first one he's missed through injury. Here's Russell. Now up summer ball. And Russell! And Hicks tested already and did enough! An awkward moment for the goalkeeper and Drury keeps up the pressure. Well, he had to grapple with that on his return to the first team, the Leeds goalkeeper. And he just kept it the right side of the line. Well, it looked a good save in the end, didn't it? Well, that's what happens when you're missing one of your centre-halves. Semabor makes a really good run here. Just one touch, whips it into the danger area, slightly behind. Keeper doesn't deal with it, it's not over the line, he does well in the end. Should have dealt with the first one a little bit better. It's good adjustment here. Doesn't try and smash it, just gets it on target, Russell. Keeper worried for a split second, just recovers really well and makes sure it goes away from the danger area. Hughes with a header. Naylor still meeting everything in the air. This is Holt. And there's danger here, Houlihan. And Higgs got a touch to it, and Naylor was first in to sweep up. Well, he'd be disappointed with himself there. And acres of space, got to be a worry. Holt does really well, really aware. Just switches it in there. Look at the time, the space. Just hits it straight at the goalkeeper. And again, he parries it, but gets away with it. 
and it's Lappin's corner, and the header across is wide. Oh, Hula, and he's got five this season, hasn't he? I think he'll feel he should have added to that. It's unselfish again by Holt. Just reverses it in there. First touch, not too bad, but just scuffs it. And the keeper gets lucky again. Job Naylor's clean, cleaning up there to get him out of it. Beckford. That's Johnson looking to set. Jermaine Beckford away. Doherty trying to stick with him. And the defender does enough. Well, stayed on his feet well, didn't he? That's what Jermaine Beckford's looking for, that diagonal ball. Try to get himself one-on-one -on -one with Doherty. He does that, but the experience comes into play here. Stays on his feet, doesn't dive in, in the box. But Beckford gets his team a corner. Well, Leeds have got another problem now. Their substitute goalkeeper, Kasper Ankergren, is getting stripped. There was a signal from Hicks to Snodgrass when he was possibly tempted to play a back pass to him to get the ball forward. But the start of the attack that's led to this corner, which Snodgrass himself takes. And they come piling in, and the goal is scored by Bradley Johnson. His sixth of the season, and leads in front. Well, after nearly going one behind with Hulahan's attempt, they go down the other end, and the quality of the corner makes it possible. Beautifully flighted, attacked really well, not defended very well, to be fair. A lot of good movement. Look how he climbs at the back post, but keeper comes nowhere near it. Just pulls off there, behind off Semaphore, hangs well in the air, and that's poor defending. Have to do better than that. And he's delighted. Give Johnson all the credit. That is desire. Up in, trying to pick out Chris Martin. And he was tussling with him for it. It was a foul as well. He got the wrong side of him. Desperate to put that right and get the right side and in the end. Well, wrong side, just gets beyond him, Martin. He's all over him, can't get the right side of him, and in the end, just drags him down. Taking a quick and a short free kick this time. Hughes has pulled it back. Houlihan. It's Lappin with the cross, and there's the equaliser. And who else? Grant Holt into double figures for the season, and it's the goal that Norwich had been threatening. Well, what I want to say, he comes alive if the service is right in that area. If it's good enough, he will get on the end of it. They work it well, could have put it in here, Hulan didn't, gets forced wide, plays it back, they keep possession well. There he is, vying for position at the end, gets across, stronger than his defensive marker. It's a good ball in, and it's his desire that wins the day. That's great all. And it's Beckford, Jermaine Beckford, what a save! Incredible stop! Paul Lambert applauding that, and that, so he should. You just expected when that ball fell, that was 2-1. And here's Martin. Oh, what a save from that man there. Gradle there on the end of it. It's a Norwich boot that puts him through, great first touch, tries to curl it in the bottom corner. Here comes the Norwich boot, puts him in, fabulous first touch. What a big, strong hand that is. Early side have still got time to find the winner, there'll be four minutes of added time. Michael Doyle still hasn't scored four leads since his arrival here. Here's Richard Naylor. Up goes Candon, he did well to win that. Gradle's got Beckford over to his left, Beckford! The only reason I think he's missed this is because of, of the pace of the ball from Gradle. Everything seemed right there. The header from Candle, the ball from Gradle. You thought this was going to be the winner late on. There's the header, referee. Looked at his linesman, sent play on, wasn't offside. I think it was just a pace 
just couldn't slide enough to get that vital touch to turn it in to win the game for Leeds. Keeper have been beaten, scrambling across. How many times have we seen Jermaine Beckford finish in those sort of areas? Certainly expected him to there. Matthew Gillon with the briefest of run-outs. Oh, that's a terrible kick! It's gone straight to Jermaine Beckford! And he has won it, surely! And the man who denied him with a brilliant save earlier has given him a gift of a goal! Head-in-hands moment for Fraser Forster, but sheer delight for Beckford and for Leeds United! Well, this is what a crazy finish. We've been saying all along, give Beckford that time and space. He can do it, he's missed a couple, but he's brave enough to keep getting in there. And what was he thinking, Forster? Anywhere but where he's put this. That's awful. But look at the defence, they've all turned their backs. That's just as bad for me. Fantastic finish, but the defending here. Look, they've all turned their backs, not looking at the ball. That's criminal defending for me. Blame the keeper all your life, but blame the defenders as well. Paul, can you put your thoughts into words at the moment? No, not, not really. Really, absolutely galling. Absolutely galling. Never deserved that, that's for sure. I thought the better team on the night, more than opinion. Might be biased, but it's more than opinion. We just, um, it just, uh, it's just an error, and that was a grave error. So after one win and one defeat from those two games on the road, City were back on home soil. Swindon Town, the visitors, decide later to emerge as genuine promotion contenders. A near full house at Carrow Road to see a first senior home appearance for 18 year old fullback George Franken, who made his full Norwich debut at Carlisle. City were dominant rather than devastating, but produced their best moments of quality, particularly in the first half. Good approach play leading to a snapshot from Grant Holt, the crossbar denying him a fine goal. For the most part, Swindon were intent on defence. Plenty of red shirts behind the ball as Darrow Russell's effort was snuffed out. Russell did all he could and the shot was on target. Kevin Amankwa in the way, although goalkeeper David Lucas appeared to have it covered. But Swindon couldn't deal with a quick corner. Holt's header was well stopped by the Swindon keeper, but Chris Martin was quick to the rebound. A real poacher's effort this one for his fifth of the campaign. Good awareness from Martin as two Swindon defenders tried to close down the space in front of him. Lucas well beaten. Martin earning applause from his manager. 1-0, another three points, City up to fifth. Off to struggling Stockport next, 1,200 expectant Canary fans hoping to round off October in style. And as so often this season, City were grateful to on-loan goalkeeper Fraser Forster as County went close to snatching a surprise early lead. Forster with a superb save from Peter Thompson. And it wasn't long before Norwich took advantage of that escape. Grant Holt taking his tally for the season to 11 with a far post header from Simon Lappin's free kick. 1-0 at half-time. Holt then played a part in City's second, making ground before finding Chris Martin on the right. The Canary striker beating one man, brought down by the second, penalty. Where's Houlihan making no mistake from the spot. 2-0, Houlihan happy to share the moment with City's dedicated travelling supporters.
A certain Michael Rose then pushed forward from left back for Stockport, playing in Carl Baker, who somehow contrived to embarrass the City defence by carving out an opening on the edge of the box and beating Forster, courtesy of a deflection off teammate Thompson, who was credited with the goal. Stockport suddenly back in the game at 2-1. Rose might have done enough to impress City boss Paul Lambert at that stage, although he was then embarrassed when Norwich sub Cody McDonald nipped in to rob him and promptly made him pay by setting up Holt with an unselfish cross. 3-1 Norwich. Next up, the FA Cup and a potential banana skin awaiting at non-league Holton Rovers. One of the magic tricks that the FA Cup can perform is to put places on the map and if this ground stages a second round tie later this month, everybody will know where Poulton is. Hurahan held up by Rich. Askew to Smith. It's crossed in, Holt with a free header across the face of goal and in. And it's Norwich City who break through inside of 15 minutes with yet another goal from Grant Holt. Of all the man to escape the Poulton marking, Holt Norris in his deadliest marker, Marksman, had acres of space really. Well, they just got caught out because Charlie Rich ended up with two to deal with and that shouldn't have happened. He couldn't get close to the crosser and then Holt just managed to sneak away from his marker when Smith got it in far post. Man in form, does it again. Cleverly got his head to the corner. Jeffries, Houlihan, oh it slips through, Peels from offside but Martin has knocked it in. That's double their money, a goal from each of the front men, first Grant Holt and now Chris Martin. And he was just allowed to run free, now was he on or off? On, that's in line. And it's just very clever from Houlihan. I mean, the more possession Norwich have begin to get, then Houlihan's coming to the fore more. It's nice skill, just sees the pass, and that's it with Houlihan. He sees and does things nice and early. Hill, I think, has done really well. Houlihan's clever because the two front men are causing problems with their movement. It's good. Rapid with the corner. Oh, the free header for Holt, and an inevitable outcome. And Norwich City lead by three goals to nil going into the interval. And Grant Holt has scored a couple of them. Beautifully delivered, beautifully celebrated by Grant Holt, who is a striker on fire. A centre-forwards goal, if ever you saw one. And I think, you know, all three goals that Holt have conceded, there's been a naivety about them. Look at the room you give Grant Holt, arguably the best header in the Norwich side, and you give him a free chance like that, there's nothing Kyle Phillips can really do. And that's the last thing you want to Holt. They're hoping to get one back before the break. They go three down. Well, there's already a bit of a cult figure with the... Uh, Norwich City fans calling in the new Ewan Roberts and there's no greater compliment Tudor Jones McDonald's got there he's running away from him somewhat but he's linked up with Martin who has support roll back to Smith and now to Houlihan oh beautifully taken Wes Houlihan makes it four for Norwich City Fabulous finish, full marks to McDonald who chased what was almost a lost cause and set the goal up, but what a finish. Well I'm just thinking again Norwich if they could be a little quicker maybe they'll get a finish on it and I thought they were just going to allow Paul and Rovers to get enough people back, that's class. I mean he's a stylish footballer, we know that, he, he has a trick or two about him, good imagination on the ball. But that's clinical, that's, that's brilliant from Hulan and he has to pick it a bunch. Black stayed down, McDonald is onside here, Cody McDonald, and it's just passed into the goal for a second of the afternoon for Chris Martin. And Norwich City are running away with this now, they've got five. Well, Port Rovers have reshuffled things second half, they've got Charlie Rich in midfield and they've, they've moved the defence, you know, across one. Tyrrell has got the left back and I think they've struggled a little bit. And I think particularly on that side, Houlihan has 
made great inroads, but Cody McDowell too has, has begun to look good. Just wonder for a moment, was Chris Martin going to drift offside? I, I don't think it's happened, I think he's just stayed in line. And Cody McDowell does a sensible thing, plays him in, and it's a shame in a way now for the, the spirit we saw from the Colton second half, but Norgers do, are doing what they should be doing, been professional about it, and trying to get as many as they can. And on the test for Carl Phillips, Chris Martin eyeing a hat-trick. Phillips away from his post. Look, he's going to save it if he stays there, but he thinks he's going to go for the little curler over the wall. So he deserts his position, and Martin outfoxes him, and Poulton all of a sudden have been hit for six. I mean, even, even without the goals, I mean, Norwich have been classic. And I know people say, well, yeah, they're playing against a side five leagues lower than them, but never mind that. They acquitted themselves really well, did what they had to. Impressive. Smith. Asku arriving. In towards Martin again. He's got another. Chris Martin, seven for Norwich City. Oh, it's worth a trip. But it's back to work on Monday for most of the men in Maroon. They'll never forget the adventure of the last week or so. It's been a real uh, fellowship grown up between these two clubs, but Paul Lambert is getting a, a very competitive Norwich City team together again. They were far, far too good for their opponents today. Four goals for Chris Martin in a seven-goal Norwich City win. It was a mountain for Bolton to climb. Three days, or rather nights later, more knockout action in the Johnston's Paint Trophy Southern Sector quarter-final, where goals proved hard to come by at Swindon. In open play at least, no Houlihan, no Holtz, nor Chris Martin for City, no goals either. Swindon introduced a lively winger by the name of Anthony McNamee midway through the second half. Although he caught the eye, he wasn't about to break the deadlock. Fellow sub Charlie Austin went close near the end, only to be denied by Fraser Forster. So, goalless after 90 minutes, it was into the penalty shootouts. Owen Tudor Jones, Stephen Hughes, Michael Nelson, and Jens Bertel Askew all successful for City. Forster then saving from Craig Easton, leaving Jamie Curriton to shoot the Canaries into the Southern Area semi final. Five three on penalties. So as City make progress in two cup competitions in a week, they continue to be upwardly mobile in League One. Their next opponents at Carrow Road, Tranmere Rovers, who had physio Les Parry in temporary charge following the sacking of former England star John Barnes. City were caught on the break a couple of times as Rovers threatened the shock result. Chris Shuka testing Fraser Forster after a wriggling run. Forster showing why he's been so highly rated by his parent club at Newcastle, getting his angles right to push the ball round the post. And he was called into action again, City losing possession on halfway. Paul McLaren exchanging passes with Michael Ricketts and Shuka. Forster somehow clawing his effort away from goal. Taylor in April to apply the finishing touch. There appeared to be only one outcome as McLaren burst into the box until the right hand of Forster intervened. An amazing stop to keep City level. Into the second half and City were struggling to make inroads behind the Tranmere defence despite some good approach play. But on the hour, a big break. Adam Drury twice fired the ball into the box. The second effort, striking the arm of Rovers midfielder John Welch. Referee Darren Dedman was close enough to decide that was handball. Penalty given, much to the dismay of the Rovers players. Welch certainly had his arm raised when the ball struck him. You could say Deadman was given little choice but to award the spot kick. 
So the responsibility fell to Wes Houlihan, which he took with full confidence. Left-footed, into the bottom corner, Norwich one up. Houlihan's fifth of the season, tucked away beautifully despite Ben Daniels' effort to keep it out. Ten minutes from time, City sealed the point with Houlihan again involved, picking up Simon Lappin's deep cross from the right before slipping the perfect through ball for Gary Doherty and a cute finish from City's centre-back. Game over. Lappin's cross may have been overhit, but Houlihan kept the move alive and Doherty did the rest. 2-0, Norwich's sixth win in seven league games. To St Mary's next and the visit to Southampton. Like Norwich relegated last season, the Saints steadily recovering from a 10-point penalty imposed for going into administration last season and taking the lead here courtesy of an early strike from Adam Lalanne. 1-0 at half-time. Norwich are back on terms though early in the second half thanks to another penalty from Wes Houlihan. The midfielder setting up Chris Martin, who was then brought down. Referee Andy Penn pointing to the spot. Houlihan's kick saved by Kelvin Davis, but the midfielder was quick to follow up the rebound and make it 1-1. Goal number nine of the season for Houlihan. City then found themselves behind again after a cracking strike from Saints David Connolly. Absolutely nothing Fraser Forster could do about that one. 2-1 now as the rain poured down. Time for another inspired substitution from Paul Lambert. Stephen Hughes and Cody McDonald replacing Simon Lappin and Wes Houlihan and pretty much paying immediate dividends. Three minutes later, Hughes followed up Chris Martin's shot to earn City a point and reward for more than 2,200 Canary fans down on the south coast. Although there was a late scare when Saints star striker Ricky Lambert hit a smart shot from the edge of the box, which Forster did well to keep out. While at the other end, there was still time for Grant Holt to go close to nicking all three points for the Canaries. I thought the game was too open. Two really good sides really going for it. And uh, I don't know if you'll see a better game all season, that's for sure. Impressive stuff on the road by City, who next welcomed Brighton to Carra Road. Norwich were averaging almost three goals a game at home since the goalless draw with Walsall. They went one better in this midweek battle. Almost routes one with the first after just three minutes. But what a finish from Grant Holt for his 15th of the season. City off to a flyer. The fans fully appreciative of the work by City's leading scorer. Collecting Jens Bertolaskew's through ball, he still had a lot to do. Bit of a bobble, but Holt adjusted brilliantly to put City in front. Midway point of the first half and Norwich increased their lead. Holt again hard at work on the left. Very unlucky not to win a free kick. But referee Keith Hill's decision to wave play on worked in City's favour. Wes Houlihan picking up the scraps. A cool finish from the Irishman. It was quick to tell fans at the River End that it's 10 for the season. Houlihan's left foot deadly from close range. Into the second half, City well on top, but on the hour, a lifeline for Brighton. Not the best defending by the Canaries. The ball finally worked to James Tunnicliffe and he was able to beat Fraser Forster from close range. But seven minutes later, City restored their two-goal cushion thanks to the left foot of Simon Lappin and the unfortunate Brighton defender Tommy Elphick. Protests from some of the other Brighton players waved away as Norwich fans celebrated that stroke of good fortune. 
It was a wickedly swerving free kick by Lapin. Elphick getting the decisive touch at full stretch as bodies tumbled inside the Brighton box. And Norwich's growing confidence was underlined with a fourth eight minutes from time. Bringing the ball out of defence and through the midfield with some good one-touch stuff. A touch of good fortune when Stephen Hughes's pass was partially blocked. But no luck associated with the finish from Chris Martin. 4-1. The Sizzy fans certainly getting their money's worth and delighted to see three of their attacking stars flourishing in front of goal. Martin also up to 10 for the campaign and clearly revelling in life back in city colours following a season at Luton. Norwich march on. The FA Cup second round saw a return to Brunton Park where City had won in the league earlier in the season. A foggy evening up at Carlisle and the Canaries' hopes of progressing further disappearing in the mist as the home side took the lead with an extraordinary goal from Vincent Pericard. Hit and hope fluke or flash of brilliance, judge for yourselves. Either way, Pericard's acrobatic flick saw City trailing on 12 minutes. Certainly a flash of brilliance created the opening for the Canaries' equaliser. Tremendous run from Wes Houlihan and a cross to match. Grant Holt heading home in some style, 1-1 at half-time. But Norwich were behind a game within 15 seconds of the restart. The ball played out wide on the right, flicked on to Pericard, who managed to turn inside Simon Lappin and Michael Nelson, laying it back for Kevin Hurst to restore Carlisle's lead. Two-one. And the Canaries FA Cup run was all but over when Graham Kavanagh was given a second chance to cross from the corner. Defender Richard Keogh heading home. 3 1 Carlisle. Norwich absent from third round of the FA Cup for the first time in almost half a century. Paul Lambert was confident Norwich would bounce back strongly from that FA Cup defeat, and he was true to his word. Three days later, they were at South End and produced a devastating second half display to secure their first win at Roots Hall in 57 years. 68 minutes gone, Corey Smith to Grant Holt, a powerful finish for his 17th of the season. Norwich fans delirious with the deadlock broken. And it was virtually one-way traffic after that. Steve Mildenhall acrobatically keeping out Jens Bertolaski's header. But Milton Hall had no answer shortly afterwards as Norwich hit South End on the counter attack. Smith, put through by Chris Martin, strokes home City second. That was also his second of the campaign. And after South End had a goal ruled out for handball, Norwich had the final say in stoppage time. Substitute Luke Daly brought down by Alan McCormack. Referee Phil Crosley pointing to the spot. Holt stepping up to send Milton Hall the wrong way. Norwich comfortable 3-0 winners. Delight for the 2,000 fans who travelled to Essex. No, I think when you, a team will stay with you for, for long spells of the game and it's a tough place to come, as I've said. The, the crowd are on top of you, they're up for it. South End are a decent side of have beaten good teams here before, so I knew this was going to be really tough, but um, the, the, our own support drives us on, and, and I just thought, going down to that end where our crowd is, it certainly gives us a helping hand, but I thought the performance in the second half was, was more cutting than what it was in the first half. And that cutting edge was certainly there back at Carrow Road, as a confident City made it nine wins in 11 league games with victory over Oldham. Grant Holt's far post header from Chris Martin's cross, setting the Canaries on their way. Goal number 19 for Holt, who did well to make most of an awkward bounce. The City skipper in a rich vein of form in front of goal. 
The Canaries doubled their lead with a goal right out of the top draw. Classic case of turning defence into attack as Oldham spurned a free kick. Wes Houlihan once again both architect and finisher of one of the finest goals at Carra Road this season and there were plenty of contenders. Chris Martin also involved holding the ball up well before releasing Adam Drury overlapping to great effect on the left. Drury's deep cross ending up with Houlihan, who cut inside and fired a powerful shot, skimming Oldham skipper Sean Gregan's head on its way into the far corner. A gem of a goal, Houlihan's 11th of the season, another Canary hitting top form at just the right time. 2-0, it could have been more as a corner count of 10-1 in City's favour underlined. But another three valuable points in the Canaries' steady march towards the top of the table. So five goals scored without reply for Paul Lambert's men as they arrived at Hewish Park for their first league metre of the season with the Oval. Their Carling Cup encounter in August was no contest. Norwich cruising to a 4-0 victory. This, however, was anything but. Stand by for a real topsy-turvy thriller. The first blow was struck by Yeovil and a former Ipswich player on target. Dean Bowditch rides in the mark to head home on 20 minutes. That's how it stayed until 15 minutes after the break when City finally made things happen in front of goal and two of their golden trio combining for the equaliser. Great work by Grant Holt on the right. His cross turned in by Chris Martin. His 11th of the season, greeted enthusiastically by his colleagues and fans alike. Five minutes later, City were in front. Darrow Russell's free kick met powerfully by the head of Gary Doherty. Excellent goal, and they had a bigger role to play later on. Mind you, Norwich were still being tested and were pegged back shortly afterwards. Sean McDonald rounding off a neat move on the edge of the box with a confident finish. End-to-end -end stuff. And the game was heading into stoppage time when Yeovil thought they'd grab the winner. Craig Olcock had time and space on the right to whip in a cross. And Jonathan Abika bravely dived in to glance the ball past Fraser Forster. 3-2 to Yeovil. But there was one last twist, and this would be the hallmark of City's season. Late, late goals, either to win games, or in this case, to salvage a point on the road. Even goalkeeper Forster was up in the attack. And from Russell Martin's cross, Doherty was in the right place at the right time to get the decisive touch. 3-3, a breathless encounter. And you could see what it meant to City's travelling faithful. Norwich staying third in the table on goal difference. Back to St Mary's next, the chance to take a big step closer to Wembley in the Johnston's Paint Trophy, the Southern Section semi-final. It didn't start well, City trailing to an early goal from Papa Wago and Dai. A decent finish, not sure about the celebrations though. Norwich are back on terms before the break, courtesy of Gary Doherty. All stemming from Simon Lappin's free kick, Chris Martin with the decisive header and Doherty showing why he once plied his trade up front, smashing home the equaliser, 1-1 at half-time. City now on top and underlining their dominance early in the second half. Great work from Darrell Russell, typically combative tackle, winning possession. Wes Houlihan assuming control, threading it through to Grant Holt. More than a hint of a penalty, but Chris Martin sparing the referee the need to make a decision by following up to put Norwich in front, 2-1 now. It stayed that way as the tie entered injury time. City within seconds of making the Southern Area final, but cruelly denied as Ndai pounced from close range to snatch a late, late equaliser. 2-2, and so on to penalties once again. This time, City were on the receiving end. Long story short, with Norwich having missed three, the Saints missing two, and the scores level at five all, Wayne Thomas had the chance to settle the issue. 6-5 Southampton, harsh on the Canaries, but there would be no trip to Wembley this year. Norwich left to concentrate on the league then, and a real test next up against promotion rivals Huddersfield, led by City's former assistant manager Lee Clark. Not many bright spots in the first half, Wes Houlihan coming closest to breaking the deadlock. City's playmaker set free by Chris Martin, but his shots bobbling wide of the target. 
Gullis at the break, completely different story after it, as Norwich literally wrested the initiative from the visitors. Great tackle from Simon Lappin, the ball picked up by Houlihan with the yellow shirts flooding forward. But Houlihan, who scored in each of City's last three home games, only had eyes for goal. A superb solo effort. The Republic of Ireland B International showing confidence, balance, poise and a clinical finish to beat Alex Smithies. So another goal for Houlihan, followed by another assist. A raking through ball to release Chris Martin, who needed little encouragement to run on and score. Norwich two up and their tails up too. Peter Clark tried in vain to cut out Houlihan's pass, but it was inch perfect for Martin, who didn't have to break stride before tucking home his 13th of the campaign. And just to underline their second half dominance, a third for Norwich, 11 minutes from time. Grant Halton lucky with his header, but Gary Doherty was quick to pounce on the loose ball, showing his prowess as a former striker. 3-0. And so to the final game of 2009, an eventful, indeed traumatic year in the history of Norwich City Football Club, but one which would end on a high with a crucial Boxing Day victory over promotion rivals Millwall at Carrow Road. Man of the match, Wes Houlihan playing a starring role in midfield yet again and leading by example as he timed his run into the box to perfection, meeting John Semibor's cross with the perfect finish. Norwich one up on 28 minutes, the Irishman's 13th goal of the campaign. Semibor getting forward from right back to great effect, picking out Houlihan for yet another quality goal in front of another packed house. More than 25,000 enjoying City's festive performance. Houlihan was involved in City's all-important second goal midway through the second half. Good work from Chris Martin and Houlihan with the perfect head for Grant Holt to nod his 20th goal of the season. A very happy Christmas for the Canaries, eight successive home league wins, equaling the feat of Nigel Worthington's promotion winning team six years earlier. A good sign, hopefully, as City completed the first half of the season in tremendous form. Now just two points behind second place Charlton, still some ground to make up on leaders leads, but very much looking forward to the new year. Into 2010, FA Cup third round weekend, but not for Norwich. Their thoughts, along with their fans, are certainly focused on getting another League One win at Wickham. The club Paul Lambert took to the League Two playoffs two seasons earlier. And his current side signalled their intentions with a dominant first half display. Home goalkeeper Scott Shearer overworked throughout and grateful for the crossbar on this occasion, stopping that thunderous free kick from Chris Martin. And Shearer had to be at his acrobatic best when Wickham old boy Russell Martin, who played under Lambert at Adams Park, let fly just before the break. Mind you, Wickham threatened to pull off a surprise result after half-time. City caught on the counter-attack, Scott Davis setting up Matt Phillips, but his shot cannoned off the far post. Fraser Forster grateful to scoop at the rebound. A big break for City, and seconds later they snatched the winner. Chris Martin combining well with Wes Houlihan. His pullback inch perfect for Corey Smith. Simple finish, Shearer finally beaten. City's efforts rewarded and thoroughly deserved. That was Smith's third of the campaign and his second against Wickham, having scored in that win at Carrow Road. No doubts about what the fans thought about this one.
So a league double for Norwich and the result taking him into the automatic promotion places for the first time. Back to Norfolk, City's first home game of the new year and the best part of 25,000 fans inside Carrow Road once again, knowing this could be a year to remember. The perfect start from a familiar source and combination. Player of the month, Wes Houlihan picking up Grant Holt at the far post. 1-0 Norwich. Goal number 21 for the City skipper. 22 wouldn't be far away, but not before Chris Martin notched his 14th of the campaign. This one a few games to survive the wintry conditions. Less than 15 minutes to play when Adam Drury found Holt with a long clearance. And watch out again for Holt after Houlihan tees up Simon Lappin for the cross. It's that man Holt at the far post, turning provider this time for Martin to score from close range. 2-0. All three points in the bag then, or so it seemed. Three minutes later, Exeter were back in it. Ipswich old boy Marcus Stewart pouncing after a rare fumble by Fraser Forster. The shot slipping out of his grasp for Stewart to take advantage 2-1. But two minutes later, the Canaries did make sure of the points. The winning combination coming up trumps again. Houlihan springing the offside trap with the perfect ball for Holt to run through and finish in style. Nine successive home wins for the Canaries now, taking full advantage of the weather to keep up the pressure on their promotion rivals. And so, to the eagerly awaited return with a certain Colchester United, Donovan Blake is your commentator. January the 16th, 2010. It's the date which Norwich fans have been waiting for since the opening day of the season. A chance to exercise those painful memories suffered on home soil. Colchester fans clearly unhappy with the fact that he has lauded the uh, Norwich supporters first and foremost. It looks as though Paul Lambert is enjoying the occasion as he shakes hands with the fourth official here at the Western Homes Community Stadium. You can see he's certainly enjoying the occasion before kick-off, although he does take the chance to shake hands with his opposite number, A.D. Boothroyd. City, Ben Williams beaten by Chris Martin and Norwich City have the lead applauded by the board of directors and you can see what it means to the travelling supporters who've made their way down to Colchester Chris Martin's 15th goal of the season and Paul Lambert clearly enjoyed it Corey Smith had made the burst into the penalty area, but Danny Baff's clearance it fell only kindly to Russell Martin, who teed up Chris Martin, and that was a fine finish. Smith lost his footing, but Baff's clearance took straight to Russell Martin, and Chris Martin's finish was as crisp and precise as he'd wished to see. Worked it onto his left foot, Williams beat him. Intercepted by Nelson, Lappin, Russell, he helped forward, oh mistake by Bath, here's an opportunity here for Chris Martin, Chris Martin, 2-0, incisive breakaway by Norwich City and they double their lead, Paul Lambert applauds, so do the supporters and it's daylight for Norwich City. 
Both goals coming from Chris Martin. And in stoppage time, Norwich have a two-goal cushion over Colchester. Payback time seems to be on course. Darren Russell showing his fighting qualities. There's a mistake by Danny Bath, allowing Chris Martin to run through. But the finish, once again, is exemplary. Danny Bath missing that crucial interception. And Chris Martin taking full advantage. He had a lot to do there. But he was able to beat Ben Williams. That cool bit of finishing. Russell Martin with the throw for Norwich. Away by Platt. Lisby. Trying to get himself out of a sticky situation and just ran into trouble. Houlihan. Rushed off and then pushes off Eiffel. Referee says that's a foul. First defence. It's a Kong guy on the back of uh, Simon Lapid. It's all around looking for a bit of grass to put the ball on for this free kick. Floating into the danger area. Oh, mistake by the Kong guy. Here's a chance. It's three. Gary Doherty. And Norwich are flying in this second half. And look at the delight among the directors. Gary Doherty's fourth of the season. A defender taking his goal like a striker, as he used to be, of course. Beautifully finished. In the hands, quick thinking, a mistake by a con guy. Quick feet and a fabulous strike. Free kick from White. Not happy with the decision. Not doing well to uh, stay on his feet. And wild swing there by uh, White. A touch of the ball, but it was a challenge more than anything. Short towards Lapin. In towards Holt, who goes down. That's a penalty kick. Magnus Okongai doesn't agree, pleads his innocence vehemently. Mike Dean isn't listening, he's shown him a yellow card. And Norwich have an opportunity to go 4 0 up. There's a challenge by Okongai on hole two, trying to rise to make connection with the header. Clearly being held back. Kongai doesn't agree, so Wes Houlihan has the opportunity to extend Norwich's lead even further. Due to the mass ranks of uh, Norwich supporters, 1,900 of them in the north stand here. Wes Houlihan, still not happy with the placing of the ball. So, Houlihan against Ben Williams. Oh, he's hit the crossbar! And he can't put the rebound in because it hasn't touched another player. Mike Dean explains the reason why. And that's an opportunity miss for Norwich. It remains 3-0. He struck it well enough, but uh, the ball hitting the crossbar and not hitting anyone else as it came through. An easy tap-in. But the goal cannot be given. Once again, it's in time. Fancy footwork as well, and he's got the other side of Eiffel. Didn't do enough to win a corner, but he still found a teammate in Martin. All away from danger. Once again, they can't bring the 
ball away with comfort to uh, Colchester. Baldwin. Oh, he's got to be careful. Johnson. Other side of the Congai. It's four. Ollie Johnson scores his first goal for Norwich City. And Colchester with the victims of her own downfall. And look what it means to Paul Lambert. Ollie Johnson makes his mark. Mistake by Pat Baldwin. And quick feet from Johnson to get away from a con guy. And that was an accomplished finish. The ball sticking on the surface. Johnson quick to pounce. And that was a fine finish. Rolled into the corner past Williams who had no chance. Can't gamble on this surface. Colchester did and they paid. Oh, it's beating everyone. Here's Grant Holt to finish it off. 5-0. Enjoyed that. Do you think they enjoyed it? Wow. The fans absolutely delighted, as is the captain, his 23rd goal of the season. And that was route one. Still had to finish it though. Forces pumped downfield. Colchester's defenders once again not able to deal with it and halt fleet of foot to round Ben Williams and to tuck it into the corner. Aerial ball difficult to deal with. Holt was there and he finished clinically. Then your eyes for goal and Ben Williams didn't have a prayer. Not quite seven but five will do for Norwich. Dying embers of this game now, and Colchester having a thoroughly miserable afternoon. For those who were involved on the opening day of the season at Carrow Road in yellow and green, this has gone some way to righting the wrongs of that day. Wordsworth shot. First time that force has really been extended in the second half. Create the chance himself, but uh, not really enough to stretch him. Oh, that's a horrible challenge by Henderson. And a red card. I don't think he can have any complaints with that. Mike Dean issuing a straight red and A.D. Boothroyd's afternoon. Well, that's the tin middle of it. Ian Henderson wants a Norwich player. Shown a straight red for that challenge on Darrell Russell. choice. He certainly has been busy this afternoon. The incident again, he really did jump into the challenge and two-footed off the ground. Paul Lambert, oh, his reaction was for some justice to be taken. by Hughes, Johnson again, Adam Drury, and he aimed towards the corner flag, he's got Hughes wider, he's caught by Wordsworth, the enthusiasm I think of that challenge, stopping him in his tracks,
Mike Dean decides that is enough. The two managers shake hands and Paul Lambert, having seen his culture to side score seven on the opening day of the season, sees his Norwich side score five on Colchester territory. Goal scorers Chris Martin with two, Gary Doherty got the third as the Norwich directors applaud their afternoon's work. Grant Holt's goal sealed the win completely. He got the fifth, Ollie Johnson got the fourth and overall a splendid afternoon for the directors, the fans and the players of Norwich City Football Club. around the game today how hard was it to keep the players focused on the game in hand it wasn't I told them just just go and play your game and, and not be don't get caught up into the way the way Colchester play and, and, and use the atmosphere don't don't worry about it so um, yeah they, listen, they know the game the lads have been they've been through it we have to love with that kind of pressure week in week out due to the size of our football club so um, it was nothing new for them in your reception what was it like for you when you went out, went out there today yeah it was a bit uh, it, Listen, I expected it, and I, I never thought um, I was going to get anything other than what I got. And uh, but as a, the Norwich crowd were brilliant with me, and they have been since since I've been here. I was going to say, I think you brought two thousand fans here today, and they seem to have a wonderful day. They were brilliant. They are, and honestly, they deserve a big bit of credit for what they've what they've went through and, and, and came out the other side. Home games we're, we're filling the stadium, every away ground we go to we're, we're filling it. So no, the crowd have been exceptional. Played in that 7-1 defeat. Uh, how big a spur was that result for you today? Um, obviously for the people that played in it, I think it was at the back of their minds. But first and foremost, we were concentrating on, on, on us and where we are in the league and how important that was to get a good result um, to boost obviously our promotion campaign. Um, but yeah, there was obviously a certain element of, of that, I suppose, in the back of your mind. You're always thinking of it maybe and hopefully we've laid that to rest. How has the new manager come in and changed things since that 7-1 defeat? Well, he's had a ma massive uh, effect, I think, on on how we've done and um, and his approach to it, and all the lads have responded very well, and uh, hopefully we can carry that on. Three wins out of three, great start to the new year, and City would indeed carry on the good work back at Carrow Road, where Ollie Johnson came off the subs bench to help take the Canaries to the top of League One. Brentford's stubborn resistance was finally broken with a little over ten minutes to play. Johnson with an exquisite run and through ball to set up Chris Martin who finished off the move in equally fine style with his 17th goal of the season. The Canaries had to play the entire second half with 10 men after skipper Grant Holt's first half dismissal for foul play, but still managing to equal a club record 10 successive home league wins. And Johnson rapidly emerging as a crowd favourite. Never expected this kind of reaction, um, so you know it's taken me back a bit. Sometimes it's, it's almost a bit embarrassing when I'm warming up. Just, I feel like... I've not done that much to deserve it, like especially from a, a club like Norwich where there's been so many great players. But um, so it's got to be a positive, really. The fans have taken note, and I just, I just want to carry on doing well. I do like to get the ball and run, dribble, but um, I also like to play in behind, um, playing off like a target man, and like trying to use a bit of pace to get in behind. Um, there are aspects of my game I need to improve, like my hold-up play. Coming to a club like this, this is this is where you do improve when you come to clubs like this. When you get the opportunity, you've got to you know grab it with both hands. So Norwich City top of the table, and no one enjoying his football more than Chris Martin, celebrating a new three and a half year deal after spending last season on loan at Lowly Luton. I think going out on loan at Luton done me um, the world of good um, under Mick Arthur. He was a great manager for me, and I played a lot of games under him. And um, yeah. F um, it was a very tough time, I suppose, going down there because I didn't. That's not where I wanted to play my football. I wanted to play my football at, at Carro for Norwich City, and luckily I'm able to do that now. But um, yeah, it's been tough along the way. But um, at the moment, it's going well, and I hope, hopefully that can continue. Got to ask you a bit about uh, Ollie Johnson. The crowd have taken to him, and he played a part in the uh, in the winner, didn't he? Yeah, he done brilliant for my goal. All credit to him. I I thought I had the easy part, to be perfectly honest. Um, he played a great ball, bit of backspin on it, just off the. Uh, edge of the last defender off his shoulder and I managed to uh, sneak it in the, uh, in the corner underneath him. Joy all round at Carrow Road then, Norwich top of League One.
Matt Ali Johnson's performance against Brentford ended in his first start in Norwich Colours at Walsall, with Grant Holt suspended. And Johnson almost marked it with a first half goal. Put through by Wes Houlihan, he did well to beat Clayton Ince, only to be denied by Jamie Vincent on the goal line. Until now, Walsall were the only side to stop Norwich scoring in this campaign, and they got their noses in front before the break. Troy Deeney, quick enough and sharp enough to exploit the defence and beat Fraser Forster. The 21-year-old milking his moment in front of the Norwich fans. The tables would turn, though, in the second half. This was the first time City had to chase the game in League One for some time, and they attacked with purpose. Corey Smith leading the way on this occasion, linking well with Houlihan before he was crowded out in the Warsaw penalty area. And when Houlihan kept the move alive, Stephen Hughes couldn't convert. A real chance gone. But Hughes made amends at the other end not long afterwards. A timely goal line clearance to keep out Clayton McDonald's header. A second goal may have killed off City. Instead, they responded with an equaliser 13 minutes from time. Warsaw unable to deal with Houlihan's corner. Chris Martin pouncing for his 18th goal of the season. And it was another corner which led to City's winner with just five minutes left. Warsaw again not dealing with the set piece. Houlihan patiently choosing his moment to deliver a telling cross. And Cody McDonald ghosting in to steer the ball past Ince. City 2 1 up and now three points clear at the top. Another precious step towards promotion to send nearly 1,400 Norwich fans wild with delight. Back at Carra Road and the biggest crowd of the season for the visit of Hartlepool, who had the temerity to take a shock lead courtesy of Neil Austin's drive midway through the first half. Surprised, but undeterred, it didn't take long for City to hit back. Straight from the restart, in fact. A slick move, Cody McDonald involved in the build-up. His ball wide to Russell Martin, who duly picked out McDonald with the cross. 1-1. Two goals in two games for the City striker, his fourth of the season, and a cracker at that. Perfect cross from Martin, perfect finish from McDonald. Sandwiched as he was between four defenders. Within five minutes, the Canaries had turned the game on its head, building fluently again from deep inside their own half. Darrell Russell to Chris Martin, and it's the debut-making defender Michael Rose on the overlap. Perfectly timed run and a decisive first-time finish. City, trailing only moments earlier, were now 2-1 up. An extraordinary turnaround and an extraordinary debut to remember for left-back Rhodes, signed on loan from Stockport County barely 24 hours earlier. Now six wins out of six for City in January, the perfect start to 2010. That sequence of six straight wins in January earned Paul Lambert the League One Manager of the Month award ahead of Norwich's trip to promotion rivals Millwall. And as so often is the case, the award was not marked with a win, but a defeat. In fact, City's first in the league since October to end a 16-match and beaten run. And to think it all started so well, City winning a free kick after just four minutes, Chris Martin the victim of Paul Robinson's foul challenge. He responded with a deadly strike from just outside the Millwall box. A goal to grace any level, let alone League One. Martin's 19th and a contender for his best goal of the season. Thoroughly enjoyed by nearly 4,000 City fans. Good work on the right by David Hackett to set up Tony Craig. Michael Nelson's deflection taking the ball past and did Fraser Forster. One. City almost regained the lead just before the break. You could argue Russell Martin deserved a goal with this direct and determined run. Millwall players struggling to keep up with him, but Martin failed to test goalkeeper David Ford. All for naught. Five minutes into the second half, Millwall won a corner which they short. Norwich quite set at the back. Hackett's cross, 
and a glancing header from Millwall's record scorer, the evergreen Neil Harris. One. The Canaries poured forward in search of an equaliser, but didn't get a break in Millwall territory, typified by this effort. Michael's bicycle territory, typified by this effort. Michael Nelson's bicycle kick deflected inches wide. And Norwich were almost caught out in stoppage time. Former Millwall player Zach Whitbread's challenge on Steve Morrison could have been punished by referee Grant Hegley. His whistle signalled nothing more than full time. Norwich beaten at the new den, but stayed top of League One. And so to the south coast, where once again City's resilience and powers of recovery would be put to the test after struggling Brighton took a 21st minute lead through Elliot Bennett's free kick, somehow eluding everyone on its way into the net. Norwich went close to equalising before the break, not least after good work on the left from Chris Martin. His cross met by defender Tommy Elphick, who came perilously close to putting through his own goal. Back at the other end, it was City's turn to heave a sigh of relief as Michael Nelson somehow came to the rescue. Brighton seemed certain to increase their lead. Chris Holroy skipping round Fraser Forster, cutting the ball back for Glenn Murray, who could scarcely believe his eyes as Nelson cleared off the line with his outstretched boot. So 1-0 at half-time, next it was Simon Lappin's turn to deny Murray with a last-ditch clearance, scooping the ball away, City living dangerously. Having ridden their luck, the Canaries then set about staging a late smash-and-grab raid. Chris Martin and Wes Houlihan starting the comeback, combining to set up skipper Grant Holt, who celebrated his return from suspension by firing home his 24th goal of the season. That equaliser, reward for manager Paul Lambert's double substitution, Anthony McNamee and Ollie Johnson replacing Corey Smith and Michael Nelson. Holt's equaliser came just 10 minutes from the end, but City were far from finished. Four minutes later, they were at it again, turning what was potential defeat into an extraordinary victory. Darrell Russell with the free kick, met perfectly by Gary Doherty. 2-1. Heads we win, reward for the 860-odd City fans who'd made the long trip south to see the Canaries extend their lead at the top of the table to four points. Delighted with the one. We uh, we went for it. We went three at the back and um, to get the goal, to get the winner, which which we did. So it wasn't sitting just for a draw. We we had to try and win another game, which, which is, I'm delighted with the lads. Yeah. Were you angry or frustrated at half time? Probably angry more than anything because I just thought we were in a mode where we had a lot of the ball without really creating a lot, which I thought we should have done. And uh, yeah, the lads they responded brilliantly in the second half. From Brighton to Southampton, fresh opponents from the south coast for Norwich, this time on home soil. But the vast majority of fans who greeted the players as they stepped out in the winter sun were not expecting this. The pre-match hype surrounded leading scorers Grant Holt and Southampton's Ricky Lambert. But it was a Southampton new boy who stole the show, although Lambert did play a part in their opener. His free kick may not have crossed the line, but Lee Barnard made sure by forcing home the rebound. The Saints won up, Barnard celebrating his first goal since joining from South End. Norwich's defensive wall proved to be no obstacle for Lambert, even though he was a long way out. Fraser Forster unable to lay a glove on his fierce drive and Barnard was quick to respond as the ball bounced inside the six-yard box. Norwich's bid to salvage something from the game, however, was effectively ended early in the second half. Darrell Russell, committed as ever, had eyes on the ball as he challenged Morgan Schneiderlin near the centre circle, but referee Russell Booth saw it differently, a red card for Russell. The look of disbelief on Russell's face, plain for all to see, his protests in vain as he faced the long walk towards the tunnel. The vocal reaction from City fans was pretty clear too. And although the players remonstrated with Mr Booth over his decision, his mind was well and truly made up. It was to cost Russell a three-match ban. So Norwich down to ten men and the Saints made their numerical advantage tail with 13 minutes left. Jason Punchin, another new arrival from MK Dons, providing the ammunition for Barnard to steer in the second and killer goal. City's first home defeat since that opening day disaster against Colchester.
Well, no time for moping over that setback. Just three nights later, back at Carrow Road, Norwich were looking to complete a league double over relegation-threatened Southend United on a distinctly damp night in Norfolk. A routine three points on paper, or so it seemed, but the Shrimpers belied their lowly position by taking a surprise lead through Scott Vernon on the stroke of half-time. With the prospect of a third defeat in four games looming, City set about staging another of their characteristic fightbacks, although for a long time it looked as if it wouldn't be their night. Skipper Grant Holt left with his head in his hands after seeing a snapshot from the edge of the box clip the outside of the post. A despairing Holt left seeking divine intervention, and it was clear something special would be needed to turn things round. Cue the arrival of super sub Ollie Johnson, brought on midway through the second half. Within 10 minutes, he'd made his mark. Pouncing on a rebound after Holtz was again denied. The lad was now on a mission. Wes Houlihan, as so often the architect, with the lofted cross. Holtz shot producing the save. Johnson first there to make it one all. City then surged forward in search of the winner, Johnson in the thick of things, doing enough to force a corner after good work from Anthony McNamee. With a full 90 minutes on the clock, McNamee clipped his corner to the near post, where Johnson stooped to head home a sensational late winner. Absolute delight for the City sub and his teammates, delirium for another packed Carroll Road crowd. A touch harsh on a battling south end, perhaps, but then few inside the ground were complaining. This was a precious three points in City's promotion push. Two goal, Magic Johnson, the new Canary hero. 2-1 to Norwich. Norwich fans back with a spring in their step. And their victory jig would continue four days later in the North West. Oldham was the next stop on City's promotion journey. With the home side battling hard against relegation, this could have been a tricky encounter for the Canaries at Boundary Park. But their first half superiority and confidence suggested a ninth win on the road was there for the taking. Grant Holt was denied an early opener too. Heading home, Anthony McNamee's cross, but his celebrations were cut short by the assistant referee's flag. Offside. Norwich continued to dominate though, carving out chances, with Wes Houlihan as ever heavily involved. His cushioned cross was met by Holt again, this time onside, but the header wide. Goalless at the break, but Norwich didn't have to wait long after it to make their mark. The ball swiftly worked from back to front. Houlihan the architect in midfield. Matt Nami, the supplier from wide left. And who else but Holt sliding in to finish. His 25th of the campaign, a phenomenal effort with still plenty of games left. However, Norwich still had work to do to secure the points. Once again, Fraser Forster, when called upon, delivered a superb stop to deny Keegan Parker. Overall, a great all-round performance, but no doubt about the headline maker. He's been, he's been colossal for us, as is a number of lads, but Grant's goals have been vital. So it's Christy Martins and Wes Hillhands, to be fair, and uh, I'm, I'm actually delighted with the, not, not just any individual, I'm delighted with the lads have, as a group have, have worked so hard to get with they are. And there was still more hard work to be done as Norwich returned to Carra Roads and got off to the perfect start against the visiting Yeovil. Anthony McNamee's corner, Grant Holt's header hitting the post, but falling nicely for Wes Hoolahan to poach his 14th of the season. 1-0. Houlihan's easiest of the campaign, but every bit as valuable as the previous 13. 
City pretty much bossed proceedings thereafter and might have added to their tally well before Holt burst forward in impressive style, swapping passes with Chris Martin to create the perfect opportunity. But for once, the City skipper was off target, so it was 1-0 at half-time. Thankfully, no real damage done as Yeovil paid the price for sloppy defending. McNamee pouncing to nick the ball. Holt then putting the City winger away. Chris Martin's presence enough to compromise the keeper. And this time Holt making absolutely no mistake. 2-0. McNamee enjoying his run in the team, certainly creating havoc with his delivery from either flank and providing the ammunition for City's front men who just keep on lapping it up now. Goal number 26 for Holt. And it wasn't long before Chris Martin followed his skipper into the 20s. The twin strikers combining on the edge of the area for Martin to secure the points 15 minutes from time. The Canaries now looking and playing like champions elect. Their three top marksmen all on target and hungry for more. Norwich's next encounter meant a reunion with the club's former assistant manager Lee Clark, now in charge of Huddersfield Town, who were very much in the thick of the promotion race. They're also protecting an unbeaten home record, and the early signs suggested that the run would be extended at City's expense. Neil Trotman, the goal scorer, after just three minutes. But City's travelling support of almost 3,000 fans kept the faith and watched their team turn potential defeat into a glorious victory deep in the second half. The catalyst yet again, Grant Holt. Goal number 27 for the skipper, turning in Wes Houlihan's cross. And their afternoon at the Galfarm Stadium was to get better and better, thanks to a new loan signing. Paul Lambert brought in Republic of Ireland striker Stephen Elliott from Preston and he stepped off the subs bench with great effect. Firstly, to tap into an open goal following Holt's hard work on the right. He lamented clearly with Norwich. Five minutes left, another quick break on the left this time, involving Michael Rose, Holt, and Simon Lapping. Elliott rounding it off with his second and City's third. Classic game of two halves, you could say, to take them seven points clear at the top. Next stop, Swindon. Norwich in all white and looking all right when Grant Holt headed his 28th goal of the season seven minutes into the second half. Victory here at the county ground in front of almost 3,000 travelling Canary fans could see City go a full 10 points clear at the top of League One. Chris Martin went close to doubling the lead, his free kick hitting the angle of the upright and crossbar. Then it was Swindon's turn, Alan Sheehan's free kick producing a fine save from Fraser Forster as the game moved into added time. Swindon then with one last chance from the corner and from the cross skipper Gordon Greer headed a late, late equaliser. 1-1, harsh on Norwich but the Canaries still eight points clear at the top of the table. Next, the contest, which would go a long way to deciding the destination of the League One title. At start of play, Norwich were eight points clear of Leeds at the top. And with five wins from their last seven games, the momentum was clearly with them. Plenty of optimism among the Norwich directors at Kerr Road. And a sight Norwich fans would get used to, Paul Lambert wearing glasses in the technical area. These fans were in good voice but nervous, just three wins in 14 games in the league since the turn of the year. A lot was expected from this game, but it turned out to be tense and tight. Chances like this first half effort from Simon Lappin, few and far between. With the game entering stoppage time in the second half and fans appearing to settle for a point apiece, a dramatic winner, Stephen Hughes, just on as a second half sub, striding forward and challenged, his cross met superbly by the head of Chris Martin, who also started the game on the bench. What a way to respond to being dropped. Another crowd pleaser for his 21st of the season. Lambert urging his players to keep focused as they closed in on a vital win with time running out. Hughes' delivery to the six-yard box gave Martin the chance to lose his marker and glance his header past Shane Higgs. 1-0. 
No, it's a big win, but I I think um, the game was never going to say we were up or anything like that. It was a um, big, big game, as in it's another three points for us. But I always think when you when you play in front of our fans, every game's big, and um, I thought I thought we were, we were excellent. Very, very even game, wasn't yeah. it? Was it a case of two very good teams cancelling each other out almost? Yeah, very much so. Leeds are a really good side, really good. And um, I know they've had a hard time of late, but they're still a really good side. They're still second. And um, yeah, big, big game for us. From one of the biggest games of the season to easily the most bizarre. Prenton Park, Friday night in front of Sky's live cameras. And the watching nation could barely believe their eyes as a series of extraordinary events unfolded pretty much from the word go. It all started with a handball award against Darrell Russell after just four minutes. Referee Eddie Ilderton didn't spot it. His assistant, considerably further away, did. Ball to arm or arm to ball. For some reason, Russell Martin was then shown the yellow card. He looked bemused, so too did Russell, while City scratched their collective heads. Ian Thomas Moore simply kept his to beat Fraser Forster from the spot. 1-0 Rovers. A bad start then got worse, much worse, as Norwich found themselves down to 10 men with only 10 minutes on the clock. A poor under-hit back pass from Gary Doherty putting Thomas Moore clean through. Out came Forster, down went Thomas Moore, all very spectacular. Mr Ilderton deciding Forster was at fault and swiftly producing a red card. Just how much contact Forster made or how much Thomas Moore made the most of the opportunity was difficult to judge. Either way, the Canaries were suddenly a goal down and a man down. Simon Lappin was sacrificed for Declan Rudd, whose first job was to face the penalty. His second was to pick the ball out of the net as Thomas Moore made it two from two. Any lingering doubts this wasn't to be City's night were well and truly quashed with an appalling injustice on the half hour. A Tranmere corner, palmed away by Rudd, the shot coming back off Michael Nelson, Craig Curran clearly using his arm to control the ball before firing home. This time, inexplicably, the same linesman failed to see the incident, much to the Canaries' understandable dismay. Curran doing his best to hide his guilt, Mr Ilderton having none of City's protests, quite how neither he nor his assistant managed to spot the most blatant handball, truly defied belief. Even so, it was 3-0 at half-time. Norwich reduced the arrears 13 minutes into the second half. Substitute Chris Martin chasing Gary Doherty's long ball and managing to scoop it back into the box just as it seemed it was going out of play. Skipper Grant Holt making the most of the opportunity to notch his 29th goal of the season and make it 3-1. A goal reward for tenacity on part of City's two strikers. Martin showing great determination, refusing to give up on what looks like a lost cause. Still plenty for Holt to do, getting his head to the cross, then pouncing on the rebound to give the Canaries a lifeline, albeit with plenty still to give. Just as it looked as if City's luck might be changing, so Mr Ilderton took centre stage once again. This time, manager Paul Lambert found himself on the receiving end after encroaching onto the pitch and kicking the ball back to his defenders. Lambert was ordered to the stands and quickly joined by assistant Gary Carter, who was a trifle over-enthusiastic in voicing his opinion on events. It all just about summed up the night for Lambert and his team. A comedy of errors on Merseyside. Final score, 3-1. Thankfully, Norwich didn't have to wait long to bounce back from that woeful night on the Wirral. Just three days to be exact, as they took on bottom club Stockport on Bank Holiday Monday. And it wasn't long before the fans were in full voice to celebrate a first goal for Anthony McNamee. The opener after just three minutes. McNamee was one of five players brought in to start following the Tremere defeat. His trickery on the flank certainly added a new dimension to City's play, but he got a huge slice of luck when his shot hooped into the top corner. Stockport were deep in trouble at the bottom, seven points adrift and 16 points from safety, but they had a go at Norwich and took advantage of a bit of scrappy play nine minutes later. Jabba Ibiri collecting the loose ball, and despite the best efforts of Fraser Forster to close him down, he found the back of the net. Only Stockport's third goal on the road since the turn of the year. A bit of anxiety for Paul Lambert in the dugout, but that was short-lived. 
20 minutes before the break, McNamee's free kick. Zach Whitbread's header caused panic in the Stockport box. Dara Russell's pullback was forced in by who else for Grant Holt. And a landmark moment for City skipper, reaching 30 goals for the season, the first to do so in 46 years. It wasn't the prettiest goal Norwich had scored all season. Real old scrap after Fon Williams' save, but Russell showed good composure to tee up Holt as their drive found a way through the crowded box to match the achievements set by Ron Davis way back in 1964. Five days later, another big game at Carrow Road, the visit of MK Dons, who'd beaten City in the league earlier in the season, but whose promotion challenge had tailed off badly since, while well, Norwich, of course, had been going from strength to strength. Declan Rudd, still deputising for the suspended Fraser Forster. Another three points here, and City would be taking a big step closer towards clinching promotion. But things didn't quite work out that way, as the Dons snatched a 20th minute lead. The corner finding Aaron Wilbraham at the far post via a canary head and Norwich were trailing 1-0. So first blood to the Dons, Wilbraham making his mark in a game in which he would go on to play a central role pretty much from start to finish. City had the ball in the net before the interval, some neat approach play before the cross found Chris Martin who appeared to get the better of Dons keeper Willie Duray and the decisive touch but the celebrations were short lived as Martin was penalised for a foul on the keeper and booked into the bargain into the second half and another big call against the Canaries. Rudd's long kick upfield bouncing through to Gary Doherty who attempted to scoop the ball back into the danger area only for it to come back off the outstretched arm of Wilbraham. City supporters immediately appealing for the penalty along with Doherty and his teammates. No doing according to referee Kevin Friend. It has to be said the replay was pretty conclusive. Norwich denied a blatant spot kick. And with 90 minutes just about up, and the Dons within seconds of becoming the first team to double Norwich this season, substitute Ollie Johnson seized on a loose ball and pushed forward, only to be brought down on the edge of the box. That man, Wilbraham, the culprit, and having already been booked, two yellows meant one red. A goal, a lucky escape, and a sending off. An eventful afternoon for the Dons striker. All of which left the Canaries with surely just one last opportunity to salvage something from the game. Last chance saloon, up-stepped, sharpshooter Chris Martin, taking aim, pulling the trigger, and bang, hitting the target. This was a beauty whichever way you looked at it. Martin staking his claim as a contender for player of the season. No double for the Dons, a precious point for the battling Canaries. 1-1, next stop for the league leaders, Leighton Orient in midweek. It's played up. Flicked on, there's a chance here! It's got to be a goal! Dreadful marking from Norwich. Orient don't care. Drew with the throw. Going forward, there's a real chance. Beautifully done. Equalising goal. A really good build up. Neat and tidy football. Got to check it quickly by Drew. There's a good effort. Oh, off the post. Jones completely at sea there. He had lost his bearings. There's a chance, terrible marking, and oh, the back in front, beautifully flooded free kick from Charlie Daniels, who really swung it in well, but where were the defenders for Norwich? They just didn't follow the run, did they? Oh, that's poor again. It's almost under the keeper and in. Thornton, just try to stab it through the gap. There's a chance, and that's a really good stop. Just not enough worry on it, perhaps. Turn header forward. Oh, that's fallen kindly off of McLeish. That's a good effort. Off the crossbar and away. And next, the short trip across London to the Valley. The commentator here is Alistair Mann.
It's a day when the supporters are going to be listening to their radios, particularly those behind the left-hand goal. Because if Norwich can win this one and Swindon Town fail to win their game with Walsall, Norwich can celebrate tonight. Away by Nelson. Charlton supporters weren't happy with the challenge on Forster. Forster shrugs out the arms and says why. It's an up and under from Darren Randolph. Here's Sodgett. Not too many Charlton players in this build-up, but Bailey's made himself available. Forster towards the penalty spot and tipped away by Forster. With the other Forster waiting for a ball. Nearest we've come to a goal. Bailey's ball in. Nicky Forster had made the run. He hoped for a cross. It was tipped away by Fraser Forster. Johnson. Not really seen too much of him so far this afternoon. Lapping in support. Dangerous ball into the near and turned in by Hughes. Offside, offside. He's turned to celebrate and seen the flag. Well, Andy Hall is explaining why the flag's gone up. Norwich players looked perplexed, but the flag was raised on the far side and the goal does not stand. Now, is it against Hughes? Yeah, it must be. And there he is, he's probably, what, half a yard off, isn't it, when he turns it in? And that's a good decision. And the Norwich supporters are congregated behind the goal that their team are attacking. They'd love to see a goal go in at that end. Well, they have the best view. Well, they have done in theory, but the flag brought that to an end. Here's Lappin. Decent effort, and they almost see the goal they were hoping for. Best save of the game from Darren Randolph. He couldn't have seen it till quite late either. It probably went through a couple of players before the keeper would have seen it. And it was an excellent save. Good reactions from Darren Randolph. And the Norwich supporters nearly did see the goal they craved. The visitors have been the most threatening. The visiting supporters are the one you can hear. And it's turned in by Nelson! The party can begin, maybe! Well, Michael Nelson hasn't scored since August, when the sun was on his back. Well, the sun's back out again, and it might be shining on Norwich City's return back to the Championship. Randolph made the save that conceded the corner, but he could do nothing to stop Nelson, and Norwich are in front. Richardson towards Burton, it eludes him, here's Bailey on the far side! Great save by Forster! A really good piece of goalkeeping, here's Sam. And Russell slams it away. Really good save by Fraser Forster because he not only made the save, but he got a powerful enough touch on it to take it away from danger in the middle. Excellent goalkeeping. It's a high foot, but the referee says that Norwich have possession and he plays on. Well, Bailey has been the most threatening outlet for Charlton, and on a couple of occasions now, Fraser Forster has kept him out. And really, you can't underestimate how good a save this is, to push it that far away from goal, with the likes of his namesake threatening nearby. The run of Hughes cleared by Sodgit, Doherty, Forster looking, Nelson winning, Forster gets a touch on it, Forster putting it, plenty of pressure. But 
draw it, rides that tackle and gets it up to Lappin, who gives it away. Here's Rakon, Charlton have started really well in the second half, looking for an immediate equaliser. Burton, great save again! Fraser Forster has been outstanding when he's been called upon, and it's a hat-trick of saves. Dion Burton couldn't believe it when the ball was kept out. And Charlton are still going forward, and Norwich are still being examined. Borodale. Terrific save by Fraser Forster. That's the best of them so far to deny Burton. Brilliant. Bailey. Borodale. Rackham. Sam, free kick, conceded by Hughes, very, very central. And it's a yellow card for Hughes, he's had an eventful afternoon, hasn't it? Score of a goal disallowed, also came close to scoring himself, and now he's conceded a free kick in a very promising position. He's done all he can, and he certainly asked for an increased tempo at the start of the second half, and his players have responded. Well, it's so central, this free kick, that it could be hit with right foot or left, and that poses its own problems for Fraser Forster in setting up the wall in front of him. He's protecting the right-hand side with his wall, and he'll go to his left. Bailey, and Forster's there again. It's proving to be a masterclass in goalkeeping from Fraser Forster. Just past the hour mark, Charlton looking, and Sodji was in there. And it kind of brushed off the front of his forehead and went out for a goal kick. Well, it's going to take something special, you feel, to get past Forster today. He was reacting quickly from one side of his goal to the other, got across there quickly and double palmed it to safety. Burton flicks it on, Forster, Rakon, it's now Sam, it's a foul, it's a free kick, given away by Spillane, it's a booking for Spillane as well. Now then, one last chance. Daly goes forward, Randolph is invited forward, the goalkeeper, up he comes. Strap your seatbelts on, this could be the moment. Floated in by Reed, and it didn't get anywhere near its intended target. And Norwich will look to clear, and they have a free kick. And surely now, Norwich City are on the verge of promotion. They know it, they sense it. He began the season with a lot more hair than that. Richardson, urged to just hurl it forward. Still going, Richardson. Cleared again. Daly will just thump it away into the Norwich area, well, he won't even be able to do that. Elliot chases. Here's Elliot. One back by Daly. Five minutes of added time is up, and Norwich are back! The news 
Gomez is filtering through. Norwich City. Delia Smith can celebrate now. They can celebrate now. The party can start in earnest. Months of hard work, months of toil, months of ups and downs. But Paul Lambert and Norwich City have achieved their aim. They've got promotion at the first attempt. They're back in the championship. Well, no one can get singled out on a day like today. But how crucial those saves from Fraser Forster have proven to be. It's not been about this match, but his contributions on the day that Norwich have gone up must surely be lauded for a very, very long time. Norwich City. All now that they have to do is just lift the first division trophy, it appears because they're going back to the championship. Paul Lambert thanks every player in yellow and green. The Canaries are chirping. It's one of the hardest divisions to get out of. The games come thick and fast. The energy levels are tested. But it's all worth it on a sunny afternoon in London for Norwich City. And Delia Smith, she can cook up whatever she wants. The celebration cakes can be iced, the cherries can be placed on the top. Norwich are back in the championship. What a day. I think it's terrific. I'm delighted for the fans, absolutely over the moon for them, and I'm absolutely delighted for the players. I think they're the most important people at the club, the players and fans, and um, they have been, throughout this season, they've been brilliant for me. In many ways, everything about your performance today, the character, the resistance, the resilience, it was all there to, to, to savour. I guess you're very proud of today's performance. I am, because you've sometimes, it's a hard, hard place to come. They, they had their tails up from the result the other week, and uh, or during the week, and uh, we, had to, we had to defend strong. We were without three big players from me, and uh, Houlihan, Smith and, and Holt. Three big, big players, and um, I'm sh pretty sure they'll be delighted for everybody at the football club. But I thought we defended your right strongly, resolute, all those sort of things you need to win a game, and we've we done it in abundance. A debt of gratitude to your goalkeeper who made some oh. terrific saves today, didn't he? He, I said it at the time, he is, he is one of the best young ones I've ever seen in, in, in my time. And uh, if England have got a better under 21 goalkeeper, I'd like to, I'd like to see him. Sum up the achievements in terms of what you inherited at the start and where you've arrived at now. Everybody knew that the club has been relegated this time last year and the feeling about the place. and It's just lost its manager, it's getting beaten 7 1 with Colchester, it's, it's in a bit of disarray. And um, we came in and we're so far behind everybody. We had to play catch up, lost its first few games, had to play catch up. And um, so I think the run, the run has been extraordinary for what we've done. And uh, I'm absolutely delighted for everybody at this football club. Promotion achieved, now for the title. Assistant manager Ian Culverhouse was in charge on the touchline. The boss, Paul Lambert, serving a one-match ban imposed by the FA following the events at Tranmere. City fans were up for a party and their idols set about giving them something to shout about. Chris Martin inches away from the first half opener. But there was a bit of edge to the contest because Gillingham were desperate for points to stay in League One. And had it not been for Fraser Forster, they could have well have taken a giant step to easing their relegation fears. Forster twice called into action and twice producing an excellent save, denying Dennis Olley on both occasions. But the breakthrough for City finally came 17 minutes from time. Darrell Russell's curling effort crashed off the bar. The assistant referee off camera spotted that the ball had crossed the line. Goal given despite Gillingham's protests. The replay confirming the decision with the keeper beaten. Russell swamped by his teammates and the flag-waving City fans sensed that this was definitely their day. 
Just before the end, the icing on the proverbial promotion cake. And would you believe it, Michael Nelson, the match winner at Charlton a week earlier, scoring again. His hero status rising dramatically in the space of eight days. 2-0, final whistle and party time for Norwich fans as results confirmed what most of them believed for most of the season. That fact emphasised on the scoreboard. And up upon her by the players who in turn praise the supporters. All round, a true team effort. Absolutely fantastic. No pressure to go here in front of our home fans. Uh, absolutely magnificent. So, uh, you know, we to work very hard and the gaffer's been fantastic with us all and given us great belief. So, uh, brilliant. There's no doubt we've been the best team. Lads have performed in games where their standards have been really high and we've had to fight in certain games to, to get points. But in general terms, I think we've been absolutely terrific. You got the whole of Carrow Road wanting to buy you a drink. Is there? And being a, listen, being a Scotsman, you might you might just not defuse that because uh, uh, not. I uh, listen. The, the fans have been great. They've been great on a personal note, great to the players, and they've been a credit to the football club. You were up there in the stands with them today. How was it for you? Now you know what they go through. No, it's horrible, and uh, you can't do nothing. And uh, even though you can't do nothing when you're in the technical area, it's still. It's, uh, no, it wasn't wasn't a great feeling, that's for sure. And personally, for you, how big a moment is this? It's it's massive. I think anything you win in your career, whether it's a player or a manager, I think you try and treasure it because the memory will hopefully last with you forever. And the but the, the main thing that the players enjoy it, the fans enjoy it, and um, and we'll try and crack on again next season. Before which, there was the matter of a couple of outstanding league games to take care of. The newly crowned League One champions heading west for their final away match of the season. Another league double up for grabs and Norwich well on their way to securing it as Chris Martin scored his 23rd of the season after intercepting the pass and taking full advantage as the ball bounced perfectly for him to crack home a left-footed drive to make it 1-0. The Canaries doubled their lead with a peach of a goal moments before half-time. Big boots from Fraser Forster Flicked on by Martin, neat footwork from Anthony McNamee before setting up Ollie Johnson, who finished in equally fine style. A goal befitting the league leaders, 2-0 at half-time. Into the second half, and Martin capped a fine individual performance by doing the groundwork for City's third. Once again, characteristic determination from the Canary striker, setting up Stephen Hughes at the near post. Another league double. Another great away day in a season in which Norwich truly excelled on their travels. The final game, and you could say this moment set the tone for Norwich's afternoon. The Barry Butler Memorial Trophy smashed from its plinth during the pre-match warm-up. Norwich fans saw the funny side, thankfully there was no lasting damage as the Player of the Year awards were presented. Defender Gary Doherty finishing third in the poll. Reward for his steady performances at the back. He also chipped in with seven goals. Runner-up was goalkeeper Fraser Forster. A big hit with the home fans. Excellent shot stopper. 18 clean sheets indicates just how valuable his contribution was during City's title winning campaign. But the fans picked skipper and leading scorer Grant Holt as their player of the year. Despite recovering from ankle surgery, he was able to go and receive the award from chairman Alan Bowkett on the pitch. A memorable season for the 29-year-old, only the fifth player in the club's history to score 30 goals in a season and the first in 46 years. And so to the game against Holt's hometown club Carlisle. Norwich were to receive the League One trophy at full time but they would end the season as they began it by losing at home. Right from the kickoff, Carlisle attacked with purpose. Swift, crisp passing through the midfield, and Gary Maydean racing through to score with just 56 seconds on the clock. Good goal, not quite sure about the celebrations. And worse was to come for City six minutes later. Ian Hart's free kick got the slightest of touches from Jason Price. 2-0 to Carlisle, not what the home fans were expecting. However, they did give Fraser Forster a tremendous reception as he was substituted near the end. Paul Lambert also fully appreciative of his efforts this season. But there was one final act at Carrow Road that afternoon, the moment everyone connected with Norwich City had been waiting for.
And so, nine months to the day since that shocking curtain raiser against Colchester, Norwich rounded off a hugely successful campaign as League One champions by a full nine points. Leeds, so long the pace setters, managing to clinch the second automatic promotion place, while Millwall would earn their return to the championship via the playoffs, having finished a full ten points behind the Canaries. Mission accomplished and in time on a tradition, an open top bus parade through the city centre to mark City's achievement. But more to the point, allow the Canaries' wonderful fans the opportunity to pay their tribute up close and personal to the team that had secured an immediate return to the championship. Thousands lining the route from St Stephen's through to Castle Meadow, where Paul Lambert and his squad lifted the League One trophy once again. <laughs> Norwich Castle, the backdrop, a fitting location for old and new to come together in glorious sunshine and bright blue skies in celebration of a job well done. Norwich City, League One Champions 2009-2010.